welcome to this episode of Legally Brown. This is a particularly special episode for us as it's our Christmas and New Year special. So in this episode, Jazz and I will be going through our own training contract applications we made um, a few years ago now. Um, so we'll be talking about the kind of questions we were asked, um, the kind of answers we gave, the examples we used. So we hope you find it useful. A fun fact that you might be interested in is that me and Rupi met on an assessment day. Oh yeah, if you didn't already know. <laughs> So one of the questions Rupi was asked on her application was can you give an occasion when you were you felt outside of your comfort zone and how you handled that? So Rupi, how did you answer the question? The way I answered this was um, I focused on my own personal experience. Um, I moved to the UK permanently when I started secondary school. I didn't really understand the English language so the um, difficulty I had was the language. Um, so the way I overcame that was uh, by attending extra reading clubs, after school, lunchtime clubs, homework clubs. I also had a translator which the school provided. I think it was up until I was in year eight or nine and so I basically worked my way up. That's how I overcame kind of that co comfort zone, you know, that cultural change and the language barrier. Other examples of being outside of your comfort zone could be when you first started a job and not having the necessary skills to do that job or the experience and how you handled that situation. It could be um, a project that you've started, like Legally Brum. We were out of our comfort zones when we started filming and we still, still are. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah. And even any new roles, like you take on when you're at university, or say you become the president of a society. And for even more generic, you could go for presentations that you have to do at university, um, any workshops that you've done. When you move to university and it's a completely different city, you don't know anyone, you're moving into halls, you're outside of your comfort zone because you're no longer with your mom and dad who are cooking your food every single day. <laughs> that could be another example that you draw upon. There's so many different things where you probably don't even realise but you're outside of your comfort zone every day. One of the questions um, that Jazz was asked for a training contract application was um, how she demonstrates four key skills. Um, so if you could talk about those four key skills and how you demonstrated them, I guess. <laughs> so one of the key skills I was asked to demonstrate was my ability to prioritise and I used the fact that I did my RPC part-time and worked full-time. Mm -hmm. Now that is applicable to so many of you so it's an easy win in terms of an experience you can draw upon. So I talked about my conflicting deadlines where sometimes I was pressurised at work to complete a matter but at the same time I had a seminar the next day and I had to do all my prep work for it and obviously work in nine to five and most of the time as a paralegal you're not just working nine to five you do tend to work a little bit later um, it was trying to find and allocate and dedicate a set time in my day to make sure I was doing my uni work. So another skill was to demonstrate teamwork so again I drew upon my previous experience where I worked in-house and how we were all put together in a team to deliver this leasehold project and it was just the way that even though we were all responsible for our own individual items it was how we communicated with each other, how we met up with each other mm -hmm. and how we helped each other out and when one of us had done our little bit how we then volunteered our support for another part and it was just that constant communication and interaction with everyone else in the team that I demonstrated that team working skill. One of the most annoying questions that you get on applications is can you show us your successes in life and let's be honest at the age that you're applying for training contracts I don't know how many successes you can really talk yeah. about. So how did you answer this question? One example I gave was self-funding the LPC. So after graduating from university, I really wanted to pursue a career um, as a solicitor. Obviously, didn't have a training contract and it was a big risk you know, paying for the LPC myself. But I took a year out, worked uh, as part of the civil service at graduate level for a year. And yeah, I saved for the LPC, so that was one of my proudest achievements. Other examples that you can include would be like prizes and awards that you may have won during university or afterwards, um, securing a job in a difficult situation. Even sports, like captain of a sports team, you won the tournament, you won the league. On that note, a lot of applications also ask you your involvement in sports and activities mm -hmm. and yeah. I can give you a massive insight as to why they ask you that question. It's because they want you to win the BTSS sports tournament. Yeah, that's really competitive. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So make sure you've got some kind of sports experience. Yeah. <laughs> Law firms do a lot of sports. Um, you know, they have netball, football, hockey, badminton. And also it um, shows teamwork and stuff, I guess. That's yeah, it shows there's more to your life than just the law. You know how to interact with people. You know how to, you know, put yourself out there. That's what they're looking for. <laughs> So another question Jazz was asked on one of the applications she made was um, what kind of stuff she does in terms of extracurricular, charity work um, and other outside of work projects or initiatives. So what kind of answers did you give them? Okay, so I talked about, um, so it's quite difficult because I am guilty of not having done a lot of it when I was at university. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the experience that I developed and um, examples that could really demonstrate in answering this question were once I'd left university, so I volunteered to be an ed a junior editor for a magazine. I also helped out at events. I coordinated an event to promote cultural awareness in Birmingham. And that was something that was quite interesting to talk about because diversity in the workplace is really important. So it kind of honed in on that. But it was also really important because it showed teamwork and my ability to handle high pressured situations and think of, you know, solutions to problems that arise. In answering any question, it's not just talking about what you've done, but it's also talking about what you learned from that experience. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to say, I did this and I did this and I did this. Yeah. But if you're not explaining what you gained from that, it's pretty pointless. You're just putting a bullet point list of yeah. what you've done. Um, you need to explain what skills you developed from that experience and how it's helped you and why it's going to make you a good lawyer because that is what the people reviewing your application are thinking about. Now we're going to talk about why our law firm, we're not going to mention any particular law firms but obviously every application asks why do you want to apply to um, our firm. When you're answering that question, you could link it to a current commercial topic. Mm -hmm. So for example, the sector of my firm is housing and so a hugely relevant topic would be homelessness um, and that's obviously a massive issue at the moment and it's constantly talked about in the news. So it's just linking the two together so it's not just knowing what's going on in the news but how it applies to that firm as well. I think it's worth mentioning a bunch of clients in application forms as well. Say you have a national firm and you know you really need to find out what type of clients they work for. Don't just mention one or two deals in your application form. List like, you know, a good few clients. You represent clients like A, B or C kind of thing. And then for international firms, there's more information on those types of firms. So, you know, you represent Coca-Cola or whatever kind of thing. List those actual clients in your application form because then the firm actually knows, oh, you know, this person's actually gone out to find about find out about what we do, who we represent, not just some generic information. Oh yeah, you've been awarded law firm of the year 2018, five years in a row. That's too basic. You really need to hone in on why you are applying to that law firm. Why did that law firm stand out to you? Because it can't have just been because it was in your, you know, you printed off a generic list yeah. and it was on there. That law firm is on there for a reason. Something that law firms like to hear is how they have a multidisciplinary service mm -hmm. or how, how those disciplines working together um, helps clients. So you might have a client that comes in, a developer client that wants you to um, sell a plot of land for them, but then that same developer client has got some you know, governance arrangements that they need help on as well. So then you'd have your corporate team getting involved and helping you with the governance side, and then you'd have your property team helping you with selling that plot of land. And you know, there's so many different aspects of a business, so it's just showing that you understand that there's so many different aspects of a business mm -hmm. and how a law firm can help that business. Yeah, and coming on to that, so when I was a trainee, um, I did a seat in corporate and then immediately after that I went into employment. So the deals that were kind of towards the end of my seat in corporate, I was working on towards the end of my seat in corporate, I was finishing off the bits of them in my employment seat. So it was really interesting to see the corporate side of things. Um, buying and selling these companies and then actually learning about all the employment issues and the ongoing tribunal claims and all, all the DD we had to do for that. Oh, a really interesting question actually is, and it's a hard one, but what change would you make to a law firm? Because I was asked that oh, in my wow, I've never been asked that. Yes, yeah, so I was asked, please name one change you would make to firm yeah um and explain your rationale for this change so that 
really you need to have commercial awareness to answer that yeah. question you need to understand how the firm operates that really i think yeah. tests your I, I was asked that actually in one of my training contract applications it said something about um if you had to make an investment in the firm what like develop something new or new product or whatever what would it be and this was before like social media and all all the apps and stuff were kicking are off. you that old okay i'm not that old, <laughs> but i think this is just when it, you know they were and then i was like oh i'd make an app where you know fee owners can and um, clients can see um, how their cases and matches are progressing instead of actually contacting the lawyer or chasing the lawyer. Um, that That's was my still a really idea. good idea. <laughs> that was my idea, but uh, that, that was a successful training contract um, interview. But um, I did get good feedback for that answer, though. Mm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, another one, actually, completely relevant to now is to talk about <clears throat> well, what Legally Brom is, a vlog, and to talk about how firms can take on this new initiative of vlogging everything and use it when they're doing yeah. legal updates. Um, regularly law firms will provide legal updates to their clients free of charge mm -hmm. or um, you know just general updates on what's going on and they could actually do it a bit more interactive and make it a vlog and that would be one change you'd make to the firm maybe yeah so my firm we do podcasts and things like that so my old firm did YouTube videos where partners would sit down and discuss a topic and then upload it on YouTube <laughs> watching this episode um our christmas and new year special we hope you find it useful and please do like comment and subscribe yep <laughs>